In this video, I'm surely going to upset somebody. Stick around, I'll tell you why in a second. Welcome my friends, I'm Brian, and if you've been to my channel before, you know that I've got a good number of videos covering laser engraving, laser etching, and laser cutting using a fiber laser and the two diode lasers that I have sitting behind me. Because of those videos and some of the projects that I've turned out for people, I get a fair number of questions from friends, family, and people on YouTube asking about how they would get into laser engraving, laser etching, and laser cutting. I'm going to cover some of the things that I wish I would have known ahead of time, some thoughts, some questions that I'm asked to make things a little bit easier for you. This video is probably going to upset those people that are trying to sell you a laser and just want to send you on your way, but it'll make it easier for you. The very first thing I want you to take into consideration is what your technical level is and what your technology level is. Most of these lasers come in a box, diode in a box. Uh, they're going to come in a lot of different pieces. Uh, you may get instructions with it or you may not, and the instructions you do get could be very sparse. You're going to have to be able to figure some things out on your own or know where to get that information. Sometimes there's some very good Facebook groups out there or other user groups where you may, may be able to get that information or you may know somebody that'd be able to help you out. But again, you're gonna to have to have some base knowledge to be able to do that. Computer skills wise, you're going to need to be able to figure out how to plug the thing in, uh, how to connect it, how to put, install drivers for that laser device or that laser module, get it running. If you buy a CO2 laser, you're gonna to need to be able to figure out how to align mirrors and do some other things. Um, and those can be very difficult skills if you don't have them. You're gonna to have to try to find somebody that can come and help you or figure it out on your own. The second thing I want you to take into consideration is what type of device you're buying. Uh, a lot of devices are open source. Uh, you really don't need a lot of fancy stuff. You gotta buy some software. Lightburn is probably the most popular one for any of the stuff I do, or EasyCAD 3 or EasyCAD 2 for the fiber laser is what you're going to need to run it. Uh, but there are some devices out there that are pretty much locked into their technology. Glowforge comes to mind. I don't have one. I've read enough about them to understand them to a degree. They're very easy to use to it, uh, is my understanding, but you're locked into, you have to have an internet connection to be able to use their software. That becomes problematic if you don't have a good internet connection where you want to put your laser, uh, you may not be able to use it. So take that into consideration. Make sure you do your research and know what you're getting into. If you're comfortable with open source and, and the openness of uh, the dial lasers that I have, the Orator and the LX Maker, that'll be a little bit easier for you. If you're not comfortable, you may have to shoot for that Glowforge. But just bear in mind, again, it is internet connected and you're stuck with that. Beyond the first two things that I talked about, what you're gonna to have to understand is getting into laser engraving or laser etching or laser cutting, there's a learning curve to this. And sometimes that can be a very steep learning curve, especially if you're not comfortable doing these type of things. Glowforge, that closed technology, that's going to probably be a little bit easier to get into uh, in learning things. The open source ones, you're going to be able to do, in my opinion, a lot more with them, but that current learning curve is going to be steeper. You're gonna to have to learn power settings, speed settings, frequency settings, if you're talking about a fiber laser, and a lot of other settings. Those settings, sometimes one type of wood that you're using doesn't work on the next type of wood, so it's really going to take time, patience, and some ability to learn, uh, and you'll be good once you do that. Moving right along, there's the next thing you wanna take into consideration. There's two paths that you can follow. Either you have a design ability, or you don't have a design ability. And by that, I mean, if you have a design ability, you're going to take the software that you get with your laser. Lightburn in the situation that I use is a great piece of software, but if you don't have the ability to use that software, create your own designs and be creative, you're going to have to buy those designs from somebody else. That's a cost. You buy them on Etsy, you find them other places, whether they're STL files, SVG files, AI files for Adobe Illustrator. It's gonna be a cost to you, um, so either you're going to have to learn to spend that money or you're gonna to have to learn to be creative. That's up to you. Those are things you wanna take into consideration. Moving right along, I want you to understand that when you're doing laser etching, laser engraving, laser cutting, these projects sometimes are not very fast. Some of the projects that I've created can take two, three, four, five, six hours, especially the fiber laser engraving deeply into metal. Those are four or five hour projects if you're doing something double-sided and so on. The shamrock I showed you at the beginning, that was 20 minutes to cut out a six inch, three millimeter ply piece of plywood and do that shamrock. Uh, I've had people say, this is great, you can take this device to a craft show, a car show, and you can make all these wonderful projects for people. You can do that, but it's gonna take you a lot of time. You can only sell one or two. You're better off doing it back at home and then and shipping it off to folks. There is no laser out there that I'm aware of that you're going to get, throw something in it, push the button, and five minutes later, you're going to have something for somebody. It's just not going to happen. So bear that in mind. If you're looking to make money with a laser, they're not fast. The next thing to take into consideration is when you're getting into laser engraving, laser etching, or laser cutting, there is a cost to this. Beyond buying the laser itself, you're going to have to have material to be able to work on. Whether it's three millimeter plywood, which is ridiculously expensive right now, metal blanks for when you're using your fiber laser, tumblers, 
uh, slate, tiles, anything of that nature, those all cost money. You're, if you're looking to make them for people and sell them, obviously you're going to get the money back. However, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to ruin material. It happens. That's part of the learning curve. That's the only way you're going to get better. Trust me on that. I have piles and piles of materials that I've ruined, but that's how I've learned. You're also going to have to spend some money on safety things, things like this uh, ventilation system I have here. Those things cost money, and you absolutely positively have to have that. I'll talk about that more in a second. You're going to have to have safety glasses and so on. So there are additional costs beyond buying the laser itself. One final thing I want to talk to you about is the safety aspects of using a laser. That ventilation system that I talked about moments ago is something that's very important. When you're using a laser, you're burning something. You're creating byproducts, whether it's smoke or the release of chemicals. These are things you're not going to want to breathe in. If you don't have a ventilation system, you're going to fill the room you're in full of smoke or those byproducts, and it's going to hurt your lungs. Uh, you're not going to be able to use this laser in your living room or someplace where people live. Uh, it's going to create odors. If you're burning wood, it's a wood smoke odor. Camp, being in a campfire, some people like that, some people don't. Uh, but you want to avoid that. Make sure you have a good ventilation system. The next thing you want to take into consideration is something to protect your eyes. Laser beams are dangerous to your eyes. If you get, catch a stray laser beam that reflects off something into your eye, you could hurt your eyesight. You want to protect your lungs, protect your eyes. The next thing to take into consideration is you're using a laser. These things are burning things. They can cut through things. Uh, if you're not there to watch it and it stops in a particular spot, it could start a fire. You want to avoid burning your house down, burning your garage down, or your workshop down, so you have to be close enough and attend that laser to make sure you're not starting a fire or put it out if something should step, catch on fire. Uh, I have video cameras on all my lasers. I can be a little bit further away, but I'm also close enough to be able to respond, put a fire out if I do see something. These are all things to take into consideration that I've talked about in these videos. If you want to get into laser engraving, it's a great hobby, a great way to make some extra money if that's the route you want to go. Uh, I really recommend it, but understand that there's a learning curve and so on and all the things I've talked about. Other than that, I want you to know one thing. Your couch sucks. It's time for you to get up, get on, buy a laser, get out in your garage and do something epic. See you.